This was a small cattle ranch outside of Saskatoon. And um, the old rancher was getting up in years and he needed some help. He was a bit of a curmudgeon, and, uh, but I liked him and we became friends. So I was helping him here on his ranch. And that's when I started to notice, man, there's a lot of artifacts lying around out here. I told that old fella about it. I didn't think he cared, but when he decided to retire some 40 years ago, he said he wanted to sell his land to somebody that would look after it. The first miracle of Juanus Gaben. But, you know, where do you even start? I mean, we didn't have any money. Um, and so I got involved in the very early stages of what is a heritage park. So a lot of citizens kind of gathered around and we launched off to build a heritage park. Fairly early on in this discussion, we decided that it's about First Nations culture history and First Nations should be involved in this. Now I've got to tell you how radical of an idea that was back in the early 80s. That was not a common thing. From day one, there was this idea of a special place like this that is preserved to celebrate culture. So that means now that we have an opportunity to share culture in all its forms with both Indigenous and non-Indigenous people to, to come together to learn together, to share together, to partake, and to really immerse in this wonderful, natural, beautiful setting here. But no one contemplates spending 40 years in one locale. It's almost unheard of. In fact, Wanuskewin is the longest continuously running archaeological research project in Canadian history. So hundreds of students were trained here, both undergraduates and graduate students. So it became part of the Educational Plains Archaeology program at the U of S. So Tansi Hani Nitesagasan, back to House Gagarik Ochenia. My name is Hani Constant. I'm from Station Lake First Nation. I'm one of the senior guides here at Wanuskewin. What I find most interesting about archaeology is the ability to rediscover hidden stories. And they're hidden in the earth. So when you find artifacts or you find features or you find something that was left behind by the people of the past, it's kind of like reconnecting to them. You could just clean the wall from top to bottom, trowel and brush. Yeah, like that. And any little crumbly bits, take them off. Yeah, perfect. When you're trying to identify sites in a particular area or a particular region. You might go and look at areas that are disturbed and see if there are artifacts that are exposed. Um, but most of the time you have to do what is called archeological survey or archeological reconnaissance. And this is where you're out looking for sites in a scientific manner, a regimented way. So 1982, I divided the existing park area up into a grid and I walked that grid. Long lines, back and forth, back and forth. And I did test holes with a spade about every 10 meters along that, that grid line. And it was pretty easy at Wanuskewin because there were artifacts everywhere. So Katie, what are the numbers of the tags that are in the wall? This is up here, it's one, and then down here is 2A, and that little piece came from like right here. My name is Katie Willey, and I am the Senior Archaeology Interpreter here at Wanuskewin, and I am also currently a graduate student at the University of Saskatchewan studying archaeology. Within the valley and along the South Saskatchewan River, there's 19 different sites, and so to find so many sites in such a small area, that alone is really special. But these sites, it's not just a campsite area, it's not just a hunting area, it's almost every type of site that is found on the Northern Plains as a whole. So the sites you find down in North Dakota or in Montana, we also find here. One thing that people would assume is that this was an area lived in by one group of people and for thousands of years it was those people that lived here. But in archaeology we found evidence for every cultural group on the plains living here at some point. There aren't a lot of places like that I think in the world that are really telling like this comprehensive story but the really amazing part about Wanuskewin is that people have been coming here for over 6,400 years and it was always in this vein of uh, peacefulness and harmony. 
Well, of course, you know, we get a lot of visitors here, international visitors, and people want to see artifacts. You get school kids coming, literally by the thousands, and everybody wants to see artifacts. So for instance, this is a left lower jaw of a bison. Though so this is the front, the incisor teeth would have been here, and these are the back teeth, the premolars and the molar teeth. It's obviously incomplete, it's been butchered, it's been fragmented. Now in some cases, we can drill a little hole into the enamel and draw out a little core, and we can do chemistry on that little sample, and we can tell you what kind of grass that bison was eating. And if it changed its diet, if it moved to another location, migrated somewhere else, started to eat a different kind of grass, I'll pick that signature up in the tooth. Well, we get all excited when we find what we call a projectile point, an arrowhead, a dart tip, a spear point. So for instance, this small, this is an arrowhead. And I can tell just by its shape, particularly around the notches around the base, that it's probably under 500 years old. Again, because the shape of it, how it was manufactured, uh, tells us something about how old it is, what cultural group we think made this. What I find here, though, are pretty much stones and bones. The people that we are studying were mobile bison hunters. They were here and then gone. They don't have a lot of stuff because they have to be portable, they have to be mobile. So it's like kind of doing a jigsaw puzzle with most of the pieces missing. We have to put the puzzle back together with whatever evidence we've got. I always think back to um, early articles in the 80s and 90s when Ernie was writing about what Wanuskewin could be. And uh, he highlighted basically saying that Wanuskewin is for Indigenous peoples, non-Indigenous peoples, where they can come together and learn Indigenous culture. For thousands of years, people have lived in the Saskatoon area, but we, like I talk to people and they don't seem to know that. So for me, the most interesting part is being able to change the way people see this area and see how Saskatoon kind of came to be and how this has always been a really good spot for people to live, not just for hundred and some years that this Saskatoon has been here as a city, but for over 6,000. So you got to ask yourself, buffalo jumps, campsites, medicine wheels, TV rings, all the stuff that you'd expect to find on the northern plains. And it's all here within walking distance of one another. Most of the time, you've got to drive kilometers, hundreds of kilometers to see different sites. So the question is, why is it all here? I used to think, well, it's a good place to hunt bison. Steep uh, walls of the, of the creek valley escarpments, you can run these animals over the cliff. Campsites, nice and sheltered down here, access to water. That was my original explanation. I still think it holds true, but my thinking now is that Wanuskewin, Opimaho Creek, this valley worked like a magnet. It's like an island in the ocean. So an island has a distinct boundary. Wanuskewin has a distinct boundary. If you walk outside of the Creek Valley and adjacent coolies, you won't find one arrowhead. You won't find one bone. It's all packed right in here. Second thing, biodiversity. Islands are known to be areas of considerable biodiversity. What about Wanuskewin? Does it fit that bill? Lo and behold, doing bird studies, there are birds here that are unusual. There is more biodiversity here. And then thirdly, the predictability of resources. This area, for a hunter and a gatherer, you could think it's probably going to be a pretty good area. So the idea is that it acted almost like a terrestrial island, like an island in, on the land where people flock to this one location. So you might say, well, can you prove that? Uh, the oldest sites that we have, or the oldest occupations that we have in the valley here are 6,000 years. It's a phone. That's probably worth keeping. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that every group that we recognize on the Northern Plains from 6,000 years ago to the time of contact are in here. I find their debris. I find their cultural material. There's a certain calmness and a peace and serenity here that people tell us about when they're leaving the park. So no matter 
uh, no matter their background, they could be from, from Tokyo or Tisdale, there is this kind of peaceful sensation that people have when they're here, and it's, it's hard to put your finger on it, but it is definitely something that every guest that we have here reports on. I often refer to Wanuskewin as being transcendent. What does that mean? Pre-1980, this is just a little lonely cattle ranch, and the rancher lived here by himself. And now look at us. We're on the verge, we hope, of becoming a World Heritage Site. I never would have thought that what we started would have come to this. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com. Thank <laughs> you.